Thinking about a battery backup system for your well pump? We put one in about eight years ago. You can still duplicate it for about $500 today. Th that's a lot less than the portable power stations that everyone is talking about. These cost three times as much. So let me show you how it works. When the power goes out, I reach in here and I disconnect the plug from the outlet. I bring it around down here. Turn on the switch. And that's it. My pump is completely off grid. When the pressure gauge calls for water, and it will be calling real soon because this is a 3050 switch, so we're right about the cut in pressure, it'll draw power from the system and start pumping. Let me see if I can get that to go. Look, we're only about using half of the inverter power. No trouble starting and running the pump. We've already built back up to 35 pounds of pressure. This will actually run for four or five minutes now, depending upon how much water we drew. And when we reach the about 55 pounds, 52 pounds, the pump will shut off. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, what does this all cost and what are all these parts? Okay, this is a um, Harbor Freight Centec power verter. It's a 2000, 4000 watt model. They don't sell this brand anymore. The new one is called Jupiter. They look exactly the same. I am sure that they're different inside. Uh, but um, I paid 129 for this back in 2015 and you can still get the equivalent Jupiter identical looking power verter on sale in 2022 for the same price. So in that regard, there's been no inflation. Well, what about what's back here? Okay, we have, uh, so we're at 129. We have a 100 amp hour AGM battery. AGM stands for Observable Glass Mat. It does not produce any hydrogen sulfide gases when charging. So it's safe to use indoors. They have three times the life of a flooded or lead acid battery. So this one's going on eight years old. It's still as good as new. And we, and that was $300. So we're at 429. Now we keep it good as new with this little battery maintainer. And all that does is constantly monitor the battery voltage and top it off. So that's been there for eight years. And it keeps this battery in like new condition. It's been working all this time and it works great. That was around six or seven dollars. Now, will that recharge a dead battery? No. The function of that device is to keep this battery topped off. So if we were to run this battery completely down in a prolonged power failure, I would need to hook up a better charger 
to bring it back to life. They didn't have these 4-amp fully automatic microprocessor-controlled battery charger maintainers back in 2015 when I put this system together. But if they did, I probably would have gotten one of these instead because it does both jobs. What about these cables? These are one aught cables. Now that's written one forward slash zero. One aught cable is the thickest cable that you can buy. They're probably with shipping going to be close to $15 each, maybe a little less. These were probably a little less at the time. They are quite inflexible. They're very stiff. They sell slightly more flexible ones for a couple dollars more. And if you're doing this, then you definitely want the more flexible ones because it's very tough to make this connection. Unfortunately, you can't get the right cables from Harbor Freight, so you're going to have to buy these online. Now, originally I started with 18-inch cables, and I could not get them bent enough to make this connection, so I had to replace them with 12-inch cables, which is what you're seeing here. Now, what's very important on the cable is not just the thickness of the cable, but also, if I can show you this back here, the size the size of the ring terminal. These are 5 sixteenths ring terminals and they fit the studs on the back of this inverter perfectly. They also fit the studs on the back of the battery perfectly. Now the cables being sold today at Harbor Freight, I know you want to buy everything in one store, it would be so convenient, but not only are they too thin, they're only uh, a two American wire gauge. They're much thinner than these, not recommended. But they also have three eighths ring terminals. And the, the three eighths ring terminals are way too big to fit comfortably on these studs. So you have to buy these cables online. So let's allow $30 for the cables, $300 for the battery, that's $330, $130 for this, that's $460, $6 or $7 for that, $467, add some tax, we're well under $500 for a very capable system. You can have three of these for the cost of one portable system. So if you don't need to transport it, if you're not carrying it from place to place, this makes much more economic sense. Now we've got three AC outlets here, and you saw when this was running from the power level meter, it only used about half the power of that inverter. So what can we do with these two other outlets? Well, we, we can also run my furnace. So we could have a situation, an unexpected situation where there are blizzard conditions outdoors. The snow could be up to my kneecaps and the drifts could be up to my waist. The wind could be howling and the temperatures could be near or below zero. I don't have to worry about being without water because in less than a minute, that's all it takes, I can set this up. Now how long will this system last? Well, with my 100 amp hour battery, I'll show you how to calculate all this in a minute. With my 100 amp hour battery, this will run my pump for about an hour and 20 minutes non-stop. But the pump doesn't run non-stop. It runs four to five minutes at a time, maybe 15 minutes a day in a emergency situation. I'm good for four or five days on this system. That gives me plenty of time to get my generator out.
So is this a replacement for a generator? Absolutely not. It fills the gap in an emergency between the time that the power goes out and the time that you get your generator out and running. Now, if you live in the Northeast, you know that getting your generator running in sub-zero temperatures is very, very difficult. The oil is thick as molasses. It's not an easy thing. And, and at some point in time, you're just sitting here praying that the power is going to come back and that you don't have to do that. So in the meantime, uh, this keeps you in water for flushing the toilet, in water for sponge bathing at least, in water for cooking and drinking. It gets you by. And I know $500 is a lot of money, but I've been through that. And honestly, I would much rather have this very nice proven system than have $500 in the bank. So if you lived in this neighborhood and you had a half horsepower jet pump similar to this one, that's all you would have to get. Get the items on this list. And it would work for you. But what if you live in another neighborhood? You have a different kind of pump. How would you know what to specify? Well, you can take, here's, here's how I knew. You can take the readings right off the top of the pump. Now it says right here that this one is wired for 115 volts. The pump itself is can be wired either for 115 or 230. So this one though is wired for 120 volts. And it also tells you how many amps that it draws. We are showing that it draws 8.6 running amps when it's wired for 115 and 4.3 amps when it's wired for 230. But then there's another rating down here and it's much higher. We can see here 10 point, 10 point eight amps. And also there's a 5.4 to 30. So this pump is gonna draw somewhere between eight and a half and almost 11 amps. And with these figures, we can do a calculation to determine how many watts the pump is going to draw because watts is volts times amps. Now, how did I measure that? I mean, can you really trust these these figures, or how do you know for sure that you can trust this? Well, uh, the device you use is called a kilowatt meter. So let me show you how that works. Plug the kilowatt meter into the wall. We plug the pump into the kilowatt meter. Okay, so we have all these switches that come across the meter. It shows that my line voltage is 121 volts. Uh, we run high in this neighborhood. That's that's normal. We'll see that how many amps are being drawn. You press the amp button. This is just stray atmospheric amps. Really no current is being drawn. Maybe that's the current that the meter is using itself. Certainly the pump's not drawing anything. Then we can see what our frequency is here. It should be 60 hertz. We got 59.9. Now this button here is a little strange because induction motors like pumps Watts is calculated differently, but for our purposes, we would have to push this button twice to read volts times amps. And that would tell us how many watts, because when you toggle it, so here's, and then there's another reading here, see, it says VA. So just so you know how to use the meter. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to try to get the pump turned on. Now, here's what we expect. I'll put it on amps. 
When the pump turns on, we are going to momentarily see a big inrush current surge. That's going to be a lot higher than the 10 amps or so that's stamped on, on this nameplate. It's going to be a lot higher. Think I'm exaggerating? Read this. Even this meter is not going to accurately record that inrush because I don't think this meter is fast enough to record it. That current could be as high as 25, 30 amps. It only occurs for a microsecond. It does not trip the breaker. But if you don't have a powerful enough inverter to supply that, then the inverter will not start the pump. So let me set this up and go draw some water and see if we can get the pump to turn on. And that is going to be a challenge because we're almost full right at this moment. If your pump is on a dedicated 15 amp circuit, then a 120 volt line times 15 amp circuit equals 1800 watts, maximum. A 2000 continuous 4000 peak watt inverter should run everything. End of story. Why? Well, 2000 watts is 200 watts greater than 1800 watts. If your pump is on a 20 amp circuit like mine, then a 120 volt line times 20 amp circuit equals 2400 watts. A 2000 4000 inverter is not powerful enough to supply 2400 continuous watts, but all we want to back up is the well pump. So here's the calculation for both 15 and 20 amp circuits. 120 volt line times 10.8 amp maximum load equals 1296 running watts or roughly speaking the pump is a 1300 watt appliance. The kilowatt meter measured 100 watts less than that but just to be safe we'll use the higher figure. Now multiply a 1300 watt induction motor by 3 we estimate a 3900 watt surge. So in theory, a 2,000-4,000 watt peak inverter should work for us. 4,000 peak watts being just enough to start the pump. 2,000 continuous watts being more than enough to keep it running. What about the battery? How do you calculate its size? Well, for that you need a DC clamp meter. When held perpendicular to either of the inverter cables, while the pump is running, my Centec converter draws 75 amps DC. So in theory, a 75 amp hour battery would keep the system running nonstop for one hour. A 100 amp hour battery would keep the system running nonstop for one hour and 20 minutes. A 200 amp hour battery would keep it running for two hours and 40 minutes, and so on. Well, I hope you found this first episode of Backup Power Project both informative and interesting. If so, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. Next time, we'll practice what we've learned today, and I'll show you how I backed up my gas furnace. Don't want our pipes to freeze, so I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.